So I've got my picture here. What I really need to do at this point is to draw in so we've got a better picture. It's going to be circular here and here. What we end up with, if you can imagine, is really kind of like a bracelet. It's open on both ends. There's definitely open space in the middle, which means that we want a washer. And I'm gonna kind of sort of draw it, but it's gonna make this really messy. So the washer would look like this, but instead I'm gonna take it off of my picture. My washer looks like this. I really want this picture so that I can come up with this thickness. This is obviously exaggerated thickness. But what's key here is that I've got that thickness in the x directions. So I'm going to integrate with respect to x. Everything in my formula is going to be in terms of x. Let's start with those limits of integration. My limits of integration are going to be 0, which is my lowest x. This point right here is 1, 1. So my upper limit of integration is going to be a 1. I also need to figure out what my outer radius and my inner radius are. So I've got a picture here of just what we need to figure out the outer radius of revolution. Now this is going to be the distance between that upper curve and that upper curve is y equals square root of x and my axis of revolution, which is y equals negative 2. Now, in this case, I'm going to take the upper minus the lower. And as I do that upper minus lower, my upper function is the radical x, and my lower function is the negative 2. So I'm going to do upper minus lower. Upper minus lower is going to be the square root of x minus negative 2. So let's go ahead and call that radical x plus 2. Let's do the same thing for the inner radius. Now that inner radius is going to be the distance between my axis of revolution, y equals negative 2, and that lower curve. That lower curve is y equals x squared. So again, I'm doing upper minus lower. So upper minus lower, going to set this up in very much the same way, upper minus lower. That upper function is x squared minus that lower function, which is negative 2, getting that distance in between, and I've got x squared plus 2. I'm ready to put these into my washer formula. So volume is equal to pi integral from, I'm in the x direction going from 0 to 1, and then I want my outer radius squared minus my inner radius squared everything's with respect to x. So I've got pi 0 to 1, my outer radius squared. My outer radius squared is this guy right here. So that's going to be radical x plus 2 quantity squared minus my inner, and that inner is x squared plus 2. So x squared plus 2. That's a squared squared. And then, of course, this is a dx. Let me move everything up, and I'm ready to expand. If you're feeling good about the math from here, go ahead and fast forward to the end of this video so that you can get the answer. Otherwise, stick around with me and we'll work through this math. I want that binomial expansion, a plus b squared. Okay, so we end up with pi 0 to 1. For this first quantity, I'm going to do the square root of x squared, which is x, plus 2 times their product, 2 times 2 times radical x. So that's going to be plus 2 times 2 is 4 radical x, plus the last one squared, 2 squared is equal to 4 minus, I better put this next quantity in parentheses, the first one squared, x squared squared is x to the fourth, plus 2 times both of them. So that's going to be plus 2 times 2, so 4 times the x squared. And then the last guy squared is a 4. And this is all dx. Let's get these in order, and I do have a square root of x, so I'm going to take care of that and turn it into a rational power. Okay, so 0, 2, 1. Um, gathering everything up here, I'm going to start with this negative x to the fourth, so minus x to the fourth. x squared is next, so minus 4x squared 
and then my x, so plus x, and then that radical x, which I'm gonna write as a plus four x to the one half power. And then I've got my four and minus four. Those just go away. This is all dx, just for one last time. Let's go ahead and apply that power rule. So I've got pi. The x to the fourth becomes negative x to the fifth divided by five minus four, two goes to three divided by three. X becomes x squared divided by two. And for that one half, I'm gonna add a one, but really it's a two over two. So I end up with a new power of three halves and I'm gonna multiply by two thirds times 4x to the 3 halves. Evaluating that from 0 to 1. Cleaning this up just a little bit, I can do 4 times 2 here. So this is really 8 thirds x to the 3 halves power. Now this again works out really nice because as I use that fundamental theorem of calculus part 2, every single term has an x in it. So when I put a zero in, the antiderivative at zero just goes to zero. So all I need to do is to replace all of those x's with a one. So here we go. Pi is still on the outside. Replacing the x's with ones, I get negative one to the fifth, just negative one fifth, minus four x cubed, that'd be four times one cubed, four thirds plus one squared over two, plus that two times four becomes eight thirds, and one to the three halves power is just one. Now adding all of this up in my calculator, I'm leaving the pi off, and I get the answer, phew, I'm super happy, which is 49 pi thirtieths. You are doing so great, Shells is up next.